In the video, Giant Honeybees, Life in the Undergrowth by BBC, Attenborough visits the nest of giant honeybees in Malaysia and describes their unusual nesting habits and their relationship with the death's head hawk moth. What At Attenborough does not explain is the evolutionary reasons why these organisms behave this way, which is what I will explain to you in this video. Although it is not the only place they can be found, this video explores the giant honeybees of Malaysia. Unlike most bees that nest in holes closer to the ground, these giant honeybees nest high up in trees. What also makes these bees' nest unique is that the nests are open. The honeycomb is attached to a branch and the bees cover their comb in layers of themselves. To warn predators, a moving wave passes over the honeybees to dramatically scare away predators and make it difficult for them to land on the moving carpet that is created. When threatened, the giant honeybees will then sting the predator. This is a costly defense, as when a bee loses its sting, it dies. So how does this relate to evolution? To avoid predators on the ground, giant honeybees nest high up in tree branches in open nests as opposed to most other honeybee species that nest in lower to the ground holes. Relatives such as the bumblebee and stingless honeybee live closer to the ground and defend themselves with sticky barriers and by hiding in their holes so that large predators cannot get to them. The giant honeybee lives up high in trees to avoid these predators. However, it also exposes them to different predators, specifically ones that can fly. Giant honeybees protect themselves against these predators with stinging attacks. Evolutionally, giant honeybees nest so high up as a result of the variety of size of worker bees and the competition for nest cavities. The giant honeybees nest where they do for several other reasons. The smooth branches make it hard for climbing animals to hang on while climbing to reach the bees. Being so high up makes it harder for climbing animals to reach their nest and the climbing predator has to be large enough to reach around the large limbs of the tree. This all allows them to avoid the competition of the bees located closer to the ground. The giant honeybee colonies have many worker bees, which means there are more bees to attack, sting, cover the comb, and make waves. The curtain of bees that cover the comb is comprised of three to six interlocking layers of bees each bee holding onto the bees underneath and beside them. This curtain of bees is not attached to the comb. It hangs free and there is a space between the curtain and the comb where the bees can walk freely and tend to the comb and honey. There are more bees than comb cells, so they can cluster more densely over the nest. This thick curtain of bees helps with temperature control as well. Being up so high helps the giant honeybees avoid the ants that normally attack the bees that live closer to the ground. Since the colonies are so large and the bees are so large in size, they easily fight off threatening wasps and wax moth larvae are not a problem for them. However, they do have a predator that can get past the height, threatening wave, and stings of the bees. This exception is the death's head hawk moth named after coloring in the shape of a skull located on their heads. What the video tells us about the death's head hawk moth's interaction with the giant honeybees is that while the giant honeybees are asleep at night, the death's head hawk moth quickly lands on the carpet of bees, even after they display their wave, and pushes its way through to the comb, drinks the honey, and leaves. The hawk moth gets away with this by emitting a pheromone identical to that of a giant honeybee, tricking the honeybees into thinking that the moth is one of their own. This is called chemical camouflage. So how has the death's head hawk moth co-evolved to the giant honeybee? The death's head hawk moth uses chemical camouflage to retrieve honey from otherwise deadly bee colonies. The moths have developed several characteristics to protect themselves against the bees. They have a thick cuticle that can protect from the stings, therefore the moth is only weakly affected by the bee venom, if at all. In addition to this, when a moth approaches a giant honeybee nest, the bees seem to ignore the moth's presence and are not aggressive towards the moth. There are hypotheses as to why this is, 
saying that a high squeak that the moth makes reduces the bee's aggressive behavior. Queen honeybees are known to make a sound that vibrates the comb, which makes the worker bees freeze, and moths have shown to also be able to mimic this sound. However, what really makes the moths invisible to the bees is their camouflage odor. The chemical odor is created by the moths to mimic the pheromones created by the bees themselves and is not picked up from the bees, as it can be detected on moths that have never even been near a bee colony. This means that all death's head hawk moths are born with this chemical scent. An experiment was done where the odor compounds from the moths were put in test tubes, along with a control of plain solvent and others. These tubes were placed in bee comb cells and only the solvent tubes were removed from the cells by the bees because they could not detect the moth's odor, leaving those tubes in the comb cells. If the bees cannot detect the moth is present and that it is not one of their kind, then it will be ignored. So, through evolution, giant honeybees developed the habit of nesting high up in trees as that is what allowed them to outcompete other bees near the ground. An original honeybee with a gene mutation that caused it to start a nest in a tree branch was successful in outcompeting others. This made the bee more likely to survive and reproduce more bees with this gene, creating a species that nests in branches. Being so high up made it hard for predators to reach the bee, as did their warning signal and stinging attacks. However, the hawk moth found a way around this. As with the bees, a hawk moth at one time developed a gene mutation that contained the same chemical scents as the honeybees. Since this gave the moth an advantage to survive, it was more likely to reproduce and have more moths with this.